The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Friday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN. <clears throat> Excuse me. Just after 9 a.m. Eastern time, we got markets in positive territory to kick things off. You got the S&Ps right now up by about 15 points, trading at 43.95. We put things on a 10 minute basis. You see the acceleration yesterday, quite the acceleration from 44.30. We drive down to 43.93. We pop up to a level of 44.17. I'm just going to show you something real quick on the Fibonacci basis, folks. You take a look at this Fibonacci. The first move down yesterday morning, we come back up and look where we stop, man. We talk about it all the time. <clears throat> you got to be quick with those fingers sometimes. But if you were looking for a projection of this second acceleration to lower prices yesterday, man, what did you get? You got a 1 to 1 1.618 expansion, almost to the tick, man, almost to the tick. You put it back on a five minute chart to see the same thing. Uh, just chopped around there for a brief moment at 43.55. We spike a bit now, staying on the Fibonacci trends of the Fibonacci's here for the action yesterday. And where do we get up to? So what'd you do, right? Just zooming in on yesterday's action. And I wasn't trading this, but boy, things looked a little bit attractive on that 1 to 1.618, but couldn't quite pull the, figure, uh, pull the trigger to get in the way of that moving train. But if you were short on this market on a shorter term trade, it's always nice to have those FIB numbers up there. And take a look first, right? You drive down from 44.30 down to the price level of 43.93. Where do we pop to? The 618 retracement. And then we do the 1 to 1.618 expansion down to 43.55. Nonetheless, I found those interesting as I was looking at them yesterday. We're going to pull them off the chart for some clarity right now. We'll zoom back out on a 10-minute basis. We'll take that one off there as well. Excuse me. Come on. Cooperate. Okay, and we have the S&P is trading at 43.96, up by 15 points. NASDAQ 100, up by 27 right now. A lot of this having to do with yields, right? We'll jump over to yields in a moment, talk about getting a reprieve this morning on yields. We have the 10-year right now. We'll talk about it right now. Why not? You get the 10-year under 4.6%. Pretty wild, man. Under 4.6%. We jump to Bitcoin, up 200 bucks right now at about 27,000. Crew contract catches a bid. How about it, right? Boy, not good what's going on in Israel and up oh, no charts shame on me thank you for telling me Al that would have been no Duncan Steve thank you all right what was I doing there I'm not paying attention here we go they're coming right now perfect thanks for telling me Al thanks for telling me Steve okay let's look at that chart right again real quick because it is pretty interesting back to a five minute chart we'll do it again quickly and yeah we had yesterday's action right so first you have the retracement there it is right to the 618 Okay, you drive down to the lows intraday yesterday, about 10 in the morning. You spike up to a 618 retracement of that move. But the one I found more interesting, as this thing was really accelerating at about 12.30 or 1 p.m. Eastern time, that's where it began. But as it was accelerating at about 2 p.m. Eastern time, right, driving down to lower prices there. And, you know, I'm saying to myself, where can this end, right? Where is a price point where we might stop the acceleration there? And it was just pretty cool how you take a look at the Fibonacci levels. And when you look at that extension, it was almost a perfect 1 to 1 1.618 expansion to lower prices. From there, you got quite a little pop. Uh, nonetheless, we're getting more of a pop than that right now. We're at 43.96 right now. And it is interesting that we're bumping up against the 618 of that dramatic move lower yesterday afternoon. Not sure that's going to hold right now. We got yields moving in dramatic fashion. That is going to drive a lot of the action, to say the least. How about gold, man? Up $42. $42. Up 2.2% at $19.25. There are some mammoth moves all over the place, man. You check, take a look at yields. Yields yesterday. You go from a spike of 108.16 down to a low of 107.04, we'll call that a point and a half. 
And since that, then we are up almost a point. So you trade down a point and a half yesterday. You trade up a full point today. I'm generalizing. Mammoth moves, to put it lightly. Uh, to put it lightly. Yeah, and those crew prices. What's going on in Israel, Gaza? Talking about Palestinians evacuating the Gaza Strip. Easier said than done, right? But things seem like they're going to escalate. It shouldn't be surprising, but nonetheless, that's where we find ourselves. And yeah, how about the 30 year, man? You go from 114 down to a price point of about 111. You're talking about three full points down, two full points up. <laughs> Just wild, to put it lightly. All right, let's jump right into earnings, man. We kick things off. JP Morgan with their numbers. How about $23 billion in 90 days? That's what they're making on net interest income. I think it's 22.9. Let's take a look at it. JP Morgan, not just another net interest income record, lifts guidance, fixed income traders post surprise third quarter revenue gain. The number that's getting a lot of attention, there it is, $22.9 in the three months through September 30th. That is just wild stuff. Um, there are some lofty numbers in terms of what they're getting paid for net interest income, in terms of what they're paying out. The biggest U.S. bank said they expect to generate $89 billion from the revenue source this year. That's just from net interest income. Just from net interest income, they are going to generate $88 billion from the revenue source this year. And I think that's income, net interest income. It's not in net interest it's not gross interest, right? It's net interest income, 22.9, 88.5. They acknowledge it's not going to be like this forever, okay? We acknowledge that these results benefit from our over-earning on both net interest income and below normal credit costs, both of which will normalize over time. That's Jamie Dimon. The CEO warned that the wars in Ukraine and Middle East could have far-reaching consequences. This may be the most dangerous time the world has seen in decades. A little geopolitical twist in there as well. You got gold spiking. You have crude spiking right now. We jump back to the charts to take a look at the dollar index right now. You get the dollar index as we have yields going lower. Excuse me. Yes, yields going lower, right? Yields go higher yesterday. You spike on the dollar from 105.70 to 106.60. The dollar's still staying. That's the most remarkable part of what's going on right now. You take a look at this thing on a daily basis, okay? And boy, we've been on quite a tear. Let's take that off just for some clarity here a little big picture what do we got on here yeah okay so that's the full pullback on the dollar from the highs of 2022 down to about 100 we back out you got a little bit of a reprieve man but dollar strength continuing in pretty dramatic fashion this morning we're only off by about eight pennies but boy we got yields ripping lower at that same time as you have the dollar index not giving up anything right now. So what do we got? A safe haven. People flock into gold. People flock into the dollar. Okay, even at a time that we have yields reprieve, um, giving quite a little bit of a reprieve on a 10-year and a 30-year basis, to put it lightly. So you jump over to J.P. Morgan. As I mentioned, they come out with their numbers, strong numbers. You're up to 149. You're backing off a bit to 147.50. You're still going to open by about two dollars. We get the banks today. Earnings season kicking it off next week as well. And yeah, we'll see where we go from there. Getting back into those JP Morgan numbers there. Yeah, they got First Republic in there they're talking about. Loans rose 18% from a year earlier. Deposits only falling 1%. 1.5 billion in net charge-offs. Either way, decent numbers for JP Morgan. They're trading higher this morning. We'll check out some of the other banks. We'll take a look at some of the equities this morning. Stay tuned, folks. It's Friday. Right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at tfnn.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got JP Morgan trading up about $2 on their strong numbers this morning. You jump around. Wells Fargo, going to be up this morning as well, up about a dollar, similar percentage wise to JP Morgan. You spiked to 4120, you're back a bit to 4063. You jump to City out with their numbers. All the banks trading higher this morning, posting decent numbers. City up by about a dollar as well. We jump back to them, the, a few of those, starting things off with Wells Fargo. So you got JP Morgan taking in $22.9 in net interest income. Wells Fargo, $13.1 billion in net interest income in 90 days. Revenue collected from loan payments minus what depositors are paid is how they put it. That topped the $12.8 billion that the market was looking for. That's $300 million in extra income over 90 days than what the market's looking for. It's just a decimal point, but nonetheless, man. Expenses also rose more than expected, though, at Citi. No, excuse me. This is Wells Fargo. We're going to, we're going to do Citi next. 13.1 billion in the quarter, pretty much right in line with net interest income, right? Which is interesting. Getting costs under control has been a key tenet of the turnaround plan since uh, the new CEO took over four years ago. Wells Fargo raises the forecast for full year expenses. Um, there's your forecast. We're talking about $51.5 billion is what they're talking about there. Yeah. The company, again, lifted its full year guidance for non-interest expenses, including operating losses, to $51.5 billion. Nonetheless, the market likes the numbers a bit. They are up this morning. We jump over to Citi. So Citi, uh, the trading desk, they crush it. Higher than expected profit. Those numbers. $2.8 billion windfall. How about it, man? Citigroup uh, rates and currencies traders posted their best third quarter in the last eight years as the Federal Reserve kept investors on their toes about the future of heightened interest rates. We've seen some volatility, man, right? Uh, counter to basically what everybody was talking about as well, the move in notes, bonds, the, the acceleration of the market over that period of time. The larger than expected $2.8 billion windfall boosted total fixed income trading 14% and added to better than expected revenue. 
costs, and even loan performance. Net income, which analysts estimated would fall 22%, rose slightly. Pretty remarkable, right? You're looking for a 22% uh, decline, and you actually get a net income rise. The results came at a pivotal point for their CEO, who last month announced a company-wide reorganization that puts a spotlight on five key segments. Trading, banking, wealth management, services, and dealings with U.S. consumers. Seems like that's a, a decent five areas that a bank would focus on. Yeah, so they, they set the expectations low. They beat it. They're trading up by a dollar today. 10% increase in total trading revenue. They were looking for the low single digits. What do they say? Under promise and over deliver, right? Remember that phrase, folks. If you can get it done that way, that's the way you want to get it done uh, in a lot of things in life. Under promise and over deliver. So let's see. Uh, they set aside $1.8 billion in provisions in the quarter, a 35% increase from a year earlier. That includes a credit reserve build of $125 million as customers carried higher balances on cards. Now, what I found interesting on JP Morgan, jumping back a bit. So they take in $22.9 billion in net interest income in the quarter. They talk about for the year, they're going to be pushing $88.5 billion from the revenue source this year, talking about net interest income. So $88.5 billion is what they're looking for. Now, it's so interesting as you look at their costs, right? So they reported $1.5 billion in net charge-offs, credit card loans for the increase, okay? Higher card losses are normalization from exceptionally low levels in recent years, and that his firm has been over-earning on credit. It's going to come back a bit. They reduced the pile of money set aside for potentially soured loans by $113 million. Now, here's where I found it interesting. The firm lowered its full-year adjusted expenses guidance to about $84 billion. That excludes a planned FDIC special assessment tied to regional bank failures earlier this year. They previously said they expected the metric, which excludes legal costs, to come in at about 84.5. So they lower it to 84. Net interest income alone, they're making $89 billion, right? The adjusted guidance for the entire year for their full year adjusted expense guidance, $84 billion. Not bad when you're making net interest income that covers everything you're doing as a bank and then you still get to keep $5 billion on top of it. That's not how it's going to be in the future, as they've said. Okay, things will normalize uh, and they'll have to go back to business as usual when they're not making $90 billion a year just in net interest income. But that's not where we are today. Today they're making that cash. They're making $22.9 billion over a period of 90 days. Imagine that, man. Uh, and there you get the spike. We take a little bit of a longer term look at JP Morgan. Even go back, let's do a five year weekly, right? Where are we? Right where you came into COVID at. Pretty interesting when you look at it in that context, right? JP Morgan comes into COVID at about 145. We're sitting at about 147 with a little bit of volatility in between. Not quite the case for all the banks, though. Wells Fargo, you come in at about 53. Yeah, they've dealt with their own woes, to put it lightly. Wells Fargo right now trading at about $40. You jump over to City, and not quite the case at all, man. Look at that, right? Wells Fargo gets all the heat, but check out City, man. Half the price of where you were in 2020, and it looks like a one-way trip, man, to negative prices. Nonetheless, they under-promised, they over-delivered. You're going to pop a dollar today to, <clears throat> to 4260, and we will see where we go from there, man. Yeah, dicey chart for City, right? All right, let's check out some of the FANG stocks this morning. We got the NASDAQ 100 up by about 24 points. We jump over to Apple. Apple shares right now up by about 40 pennies. You jump over to Microsoft. Now, Microsoft, the headline. Let's jump over to Microsoft. They're basically flat this morning at 331.28, and they get it done. They complete the $69 billion Activision purchase. That deal goes through. They completed that deal after nearly a two-year fight. Two years. Time just flies, man. All right? We all say it, we all know it, but boy, it really does. Going to be interesting to see how this shapes things going forward. And so the biggest ever acquisition in the, in the video game industry gives the maker of Xbox console, consoles a more formidable position excuse me, against rivals, vaulting it from the fifth 
to third place globally behind Tencent and Sony. The acquisition is a stunning turnaround after Microsoft execs underestimated the magnitude and longevity of antitrust objections, forcing the software giant to seek a three-month extension of the deal's expiration period from Activision. Nonetheless, they get it done. You had Buffett in there over that period of time going from an arbitrage opportunity. Seems like that was a smart play, man, um, as the deal gets done. And look at this chart, right? Is it still up there? Yeah, it's still up there. I mean, look at the capital appreciation just from where you were in May, man, up to 94 bucks. let alone how often you chopped around between about 75 and $80. I forget where Buffett got into it. Maybe it was somewhere back there in March. Maybe that was the pop. Uh, nonetheless, I remember when he was getting in, he was saying, man, this is a good company. You know, this company is a good company. Even if it doesn't get done, I'm going to be okay, but I think it's going to get done anyway, so I'm going to buy Activision. I'm going to make the gamble that it gets done. There's enough of an upside potential where if it gets done, I'm getting rewarded for that risk. And what happens? It gets done, right? Buffett, got to give it to him, man. All right, we're coming back for the open, folks. We got the S&Ps up by 13 points right now. We got crude up by $3.25. We got gold pairing the gains a bit, still up by $37 right now. And we jump to yields. You got the tenure up 19 ticks right now. Stay tuned, folks. We're coming back for the Friday Open. I'll be back in three minutes. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30 year T bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV.
Welcome back, folks. We got markets open. You got markets catching a little bit of a lift on that opening bell. We're back above 4,400 in the S&Ps, up by 19 points. NASDAQ 100, up by 42. You got the Dow catching a bit, up by half a percent right now, nearing 34,000, 33,978. The Russell, quite a day for the Russell to the downside yesterday, man. You're still almost 50 points off of where you were at the highs yesterday in the Russell. You're up by four-tenths percent, but boy, you took a beating, man, from 1800 to 1740 yesterday. That's more than a 3% decline from where you were coming into that 8 o'clock price point uh, time point yesterday morning. And boy, it just didn't give it up for the Russell crude, up by $3 as we talked about. And we check out the gold contract this morning, man. Gold contract up by $2 right now. Excuse me, up by 2 up by 2% 2 right now at 1922. You take a look at that, man. Quite an acceleration off those lows recently. We're pushing 1921 right now. Uh, long way to go to break above some of these areas that could be resistance on gold. But boy, you see everything going on geopolitically in the world. You see it going on with crude, with gold, the dollar index, etc. Nonetheless, of yields, uh, we got gold strength in pretty dramatic fashion, up by $38 right now. And if you haven't checked out the gold report, folks, now is a great time to do it. Check it out over the weekend. You can sign up right on the front page of TFNN, The Gold Report, by my dad, Tom O'Brien. You gain access to the subscriber webinar. My dad did in the last couple months in there as well. What moves the gold market? You gain access to all the archives, of course. And you can sign up, folks, whether it's for one month, you're talking about for The Gold Report for $119, six months for $559. That's a savings of 22% or $133, or you sign up for the year for $985. That's a savings of $379, or almost 33% off the monthly price. The best part is, if you're thinking about keeping the newsletter, sign up for the six month or the year, because you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're thinking about keeping it, you'll lock in those added savings. Um, and we got a new issue coming out Monday, as always. Updates when warranted as well. But yeah, we got some action in gold, to put it lightly, man. Can you find a bar that large on a green basis? You got to go back to really where we were in March of last, is that no, March of this year. Yeah, where well, you caught an acceleration to the highs, the recent highs from 1814 to 2085. That's the last time I see green bars like the one we got going on today. And geopolitically, boy, it is a tough deal to put it lightly. Words cannot express what is going on. Um, and let's pull the headline over at Bloomberg. I mean, you, all you got to do is pull up some of the biggest business news organizations in the world and rightfully so all they're talking about <clears throat> is what's going on in gaza in israel the army ordered evacuate evacuation of 1.1 million people in gaza and you can only imagine what's going to happen there if they're telling everybody to get out and it's not going to end anytime soon folks and i think you're seeing the market react to that and it's going to continue to react to react to that over and over we can jump back to our own politics and dealings and what's going on in the house man we are living in interesting times to put it lightly so you got steve scalise he was second in line behind mccarthy turns out that he's probably not going to get the votes and so probably in, instead of putting himself through the ringer of 15 votes only to lose or what it is uh gonna be he pulls himself out of the race so you got jim jordan there could run again for the post but now what's getting talked about is that maybe you have some type of a dealing with Democrats. And is this how it's going to happen? Is this how we get some type of form of compromise where you actually have a Republican Speaker of the House that is forming some type of partnership with moderate Democrats? It might be happening, folks, um, because Republicans just don't have the votes outside of a few hardliners that aren't going to let it happen. And what's so interesting here is that Government's the art of compromise, folks. So you got these Republican hardliners that refuse to vote for their person. And meanwhile, what's going to happen? Because they won't compromise, you're going to get a Speaker of the House that's going to be with Democrats, potentially. Right? So talk about not getting what you want because you won't compromise. Okay? Government is the art of compromise. So many differences. If you can remember one thing, remember that. And... This is interesting times, to put it lightly. So you got a deep division, and we need a Speaker of the House, man. Okay, we need a Speaker of the House. We need our government to be able to do um, the business of the people. And boy, we got a lot going on in this world right now. Um, so hopefully they get that done, but that saga continues to play out in light of everything else going on. We jump to a story about Mr. Huang. Haven't talked about him in a while. Good old Archigos. And how about Namora? 
you talk about schmoozing with business clients, man. Um, I mean, check out some of these stocks, right? That still just uh, Warner Brothers Discovery comes to mind most. There's Bill Huang driving this thing up to $78 before the world fell out below him and he lost his bank's $10 billion, lost himself tens of billions of dollars. Uh, that's the high, an irrational high. And listen, Warner Brothers Discovery, they got a lot going on besides Mr. Huang. But you, you can't miss that part of the chart. Absolutely remarkable it's that long ago, man. March of 2021, cannot believe it's that long ago. Two and a half years ago. Absolutely wild. Can't believe it's that long ago. Uh, so they talk about in here the relationship he had with Nomura, okay? Not long before the implosion that would rock Wall Street and threaten Bill Wang with life in prison, probably rightfully so, the way he was playing fraud, basically, with the banks, uh, he tapped out an email to a bank that had been vital to the success of his investments. I mean, some of the wording is just tantalizing in how this plays out, folks. So he appreciated the quote-unquote corporate partnership and friendship of Nomura Holding Inc.'s execs for 25 years. This is in December of 2020. I just showed you the collapses in March of 2021, okay? December of 2020, he's writing this. So glad to see our partnership is growing even stronger. It's like out of a movie, man, okay? I know all the good Korean restaurants in New York and New Jersey. Eager to host you at my penthouse apartment is what he was trying to do, right? I mean, it's literally out of a scam movie um, where he's running game on everybody, talking about, come visit me at my penthouse. I'll take you out for the Korean restaurants. I know all the good ones in New York and New Jersey. He was responding to an email sent by uh, a gentleman who was the head of Nomura's America's unit who had met with Wang the night before um, with another Japanese bank official, okay? I recognize... I recognized again how much you have supported our business globally, and I appreciated this kind of strong institutional relationship between us. This is the other gentleman for Nomura, okay? The head of Nomura's America's unit. I enjoyed Italian, wine, and various topics to talk, and I love the penthouse room with great views of the park and the city. It's just amazing stuff. Just three months later, Archigos had collapsed, and Nomura had lost almost three billion dollars. I hope that wine was delicious, man. I hope that view was really worth it because you were getting wined and dined to the tune of three billion dollars. Uh, one of the biggest losses in the history of the prime broker industry that caters to investment funds. Several Wall Street banks also lent to Huang. Uh, who was the other big one? Credit Suisse. Yeah, they're the only one that lost more than Nomura. And they are now non-existent, to put it. Yeah. Um, They don't even talk about the name anymore. Isn't that wild, right? Nomura, they don't even, you don't even speak the name anymore. The U.S. incident is what they call it. So just be careful when someone's whining and dining you like that, folks. Everyone's get their motives. And they were asleep at the wheel, to put it lightly. Asleep at the wheel. You had some of the other big banks out here, man, and that's where you see. You only got a brief moment to get out of Dodge. And don't be the last one holding the paper, man because you might lose billions of dollars. Yeah, that's not going away, lingering impacts. I thought that verbiage was pretty interesting though. Uh, just some emails among friends, right? 90 days before he goes BK and loses the company $3 billion. Stay tuned folks, we'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. 
Direction Leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. NN.com. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We got markets in positive territory. S&P's up by 22 right now. You take a look at the action yesterday, right? We almost got the entire move back of yesterday afternoon. And folks, that was a move of almost 60 S&P points. And you just traded up from a price point where basically you're at the 786 of that entire move to 4408. We just got to a price point of 4407.75. We'll see if we give that up. Just wild action across the board. We got to take a look at commodities. You got crude up 289. We give it up a bit. We're up at almost 87 bucks. We've backed off about a dollar in crude. We're trading at 85.83. You jump over to that gold contract up by 37 dollars, folks. If you haven't tried out the gold report yet, even if you had, great time to get back in the gold report, man. That market rocking. We are up 110 dollars from where we were last Friday in the price of gold. And you check out notes and bonds. A slight reprieve from, from where we've been. Now. We've been talking about this channel line for some time, and we are just bumping up against the upper boundary, okay? This is a daily chart of the 10-year. You can pull it up on whatever platform you're trading on. You take a look at the 10-year right now. We're up by about 20 ticks. Boy, that was quite a reversal yesterday. All we're doing is coming up, testing the upper boundary line of that channel line right now. We're trading at 107.27 right now. Excuse me. I've been talking about the five-year ladder of fixed income, bank CDs, FDIC insured, Excuse me, bonds or CDs, a five-year ladder, 5.13. It's basically where we are right now, 5.13. Now, be aggressive with capital that you have doing nothing right now, folks, because it's so easy to be a little lazy, for lack of a better word, okay, because so many banks and even brokerages are paying you nothing on your money that's sitting there. It is very easy to get paid 5% on your money doing nothing right now. So make sure you're getting that 5% because it adds up. Uh, and we have the five-year ladder at about 5.13%. And this is going to persist for some time. Even when rates abate, you're still going to have, if they do, right? There's nothing's guaranteed. You're still going to have pressure on the banks for capital, okay? We live through amazing times where you had banks locking in Let's go back a longer term, right? You had banks buying government securities at prices that are now seen as astronomical by today's standards, okay? The 30-year, which is what banks were buying. Even if you don't cherry pick the 2020, right, which is not when they were doing it, okay? 
They were doing it in the year 2021 when you had all the stimulus going on. Everybody had all the money. You had companies getting um, going public. You had generational deposit flow for some of these banks. And they locked in U.S. Treasuries. I mean, you can cherry pick the year, all right? Take it any part of that 12 months. There's your 12 months in the year 2021. If you were buying the 30 year, you were buying it at the best price possible of 154. Maybe you were getting it in the 160s while well, you're trading at 113 right now. The point being, okay, banks are going to need capital. And they're going to need capital for some time because investors have woken up to the fact that they can move their money to where capital is getting rewarded rightfully so, and you're going to see pressure on these banks to push out CD rates that are above treasury rates, et cetera, for some time. And so that's going to be there. But we always talk about it. We'll keep our eye on it. The five-year ladder this morning, 5.13%. That is, I mean, you know, Jimmy's talking about it. We're talking carbs in the den, folks. We're talking um, free money, carbs. I love the comparison, Jimmy, for sure. Um, and yeah, there is a real focus right now on fixed income with cash yields above 5% and most portfolios fairly rigid in their asset allocation framework. It was a great commentary. Get in the Tiger's Den, folks, and check it out. Um, some great traders in there, investors. I love the talk. Uh, and yeah, it is a brave new world when you're talking about getting paid 5% risk-free because you got to start running the numbers, folks, in terms of what you're talking about and where the market needs to be to be. For some simple comparison, and this is what you want to do, and listen, my money in my 401k, okay, it's in growth stocks. The market is going to do well longer term, but if you're in a different segment of retirement, if you're talking about, you know, retirement planning, maybe you're already retired and you want to portion your portfolio uh, to make sure that your bills are paid, et cetera, okay, I know I talk about it a lot, man, but I'm harping on it because, boy, in my time as an adult, I have not seen risk-free returns to this level. Now, when you're getting 5%, okay, that means that 5% of 4,400 is perfect. We're at a nice round number, 4,400. Well, you got to be at 4,620 next year to equal that 5%. And this is risk-free, okay? So I'm guaranteeing you right now, if you buy the S&P at 4,400, I'll give you 4,620 next year. You might say, well, that's great, man. I'll do that. We've just had quite a run. We started the year off at 3,800. You're telling me you'll give me 4,620 next year after the run we've had? Yes, I will. All you got to do is sell the market at 4,400 and buy a CD right now. Okay, I say, okay, well, that's good. Well, what if uh, the following year? In two years, I'll give you 4,850. In three years, I'll give you 5,100. In four years, I'll give you 5,348. So four years from right now, I'll give you 5,348 for the S&P, okay? And the five-year ladder, like we've been talking about, 5,600. So in five years, I'll give you 5,600 for the S&P if you want it right now, risk-free. Those are the comparisons you want to be making, folks. If you're comfortable with that and you're, you're making the assessment that, you know what, if I lose 20% of my capital that I have in the market right now, my life might change, okay? Maybe you're a retiree, maybe you're a retiree with a million dollars, and you say to yourself, you know what, if I lose 25% right now and I go down to 750,000, that's actually gonna change my quality of life. That's gonna change the way I have to live going forward, okay? But if I go up from a million to 1.25, it's really not gonna change things because I'm living off a million dollars well, I can take 40 or 50 grand out a year without touching my capital, okay? That's the difference. Now, rates can go higher, inflation can go higher, and that's the worry there, right? Is that you have inflation raging and you're locking in 5% and that 5% is barely keeping up with the cost of living, so your real rate of return is nowhere near 5%. That's the comparison. But right now, you buy a five-year ladder and you're getting an S&P return of 5,600 over five years. And for a lot of people, that's very attractive with zero risk. We haven't had a lot of big returns with zero risk lately, and I think that's the thing that gets me going. Um, yeah, you know, John from Boston, he's saying, I remember as a kid going to Shawmut Bank. I remember Shawmut Bank. Uh, CDs were 15%. The Oist, Union Oyster House, the Union Oyster House. Check it out, ladies and gentlemen, right by the Union Oyster House. Got to love it. Uh, you know, it's wild, John. So I was born in 1980. I was getting some you old, good old government government bonds, savings bonds, right? As a kid, your grandparents give you government saving bonds. Man, I was cashing those in 
finally when I was buying a house uh, 10, 15 years ago, 10 years ago about, and they had reached their 30 year maturity. And man, I could not believe the interest rates that were tied to those savings bonds when I was cashing them in. Um, seems like the easiest money you ever could have made back then, right? Not exactly the case, hindsight is 2020. But nonetheless, we go forward. And we got the S&Ps at 4404 right now. We got one more segment of the program, folks. Let's check back on on yields. We take a look at the 10-year. Just chopping around 107.26 right now. We finished up with the dollar index as we come into this break. Dollar index, 106.51. Why not? We jump to gold one more time. Gold, back up $42. One more segment, folks. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps pretty much chopping around where we began the program. How about the Russell, though? Boy, something's going on in that Russell, man. On a day when we got positive prices in the S&P up 22, you got the Russell basically testing the lows of yesterday. 1745 right now in the Russell. You're negative by a point. Dow catches a bid on some strong bank numbers. Dow, 34,068. We jump over to JP Morgan. There you go. Up 5%, 4.8. Up $7, 152.78. $22.9 billion in 90 days. Not bad. Wells Fargo, they catch a bit. Market loves these numbers, man. Up 4.3% for Wells Fargo. What'd they take in? $13 billion in 90 days, something like that. City, the traders over at City and fixed income, they crush it. They're up by 4% right now. <clears throat> They've been talking about Boeing in the den, man. How about Boeing, right? 
You pull back from almost 200 bucks from where you were on just Wednesday. And just like that, we're trading at 186. You're off another 2.3% for Boeing shares this morning. Been quite a pullback for Boeing, man. You had the run this year up to 243. It's been a one-way trip for September into October. You were at 230. You're at 186 on Boeing. A little bit of a longer-term look for Boeing shares, man. You fall out of bed from COVID. You hit a low of 89 bucks. You catch a bid up to 276. You trade lower. You're up to the highs of 241. They're dealing with some woes, man, to put it lightly, for Boeing, even as we got a market and higher prices and we check in on some of those FANG stocks. NASDAQ 100 lagging a bit, only up by a quarter percent when you get the Dow up by, excuse me, when you have the S&Ps up by six tenths, you have the Dow up by nine tenths. The big banks, of course, helping the Dow. JP Morgan putting uh, quite an acceleration on. But yeah, the FANG stocks. Apple shares up by a third of a percent right now. Microsoft shares up by half a percent. This is even when you have yields plummeting, right? Let's check back to yields as we wrap up the program. The 10-year up 18 ticks right now. And that is talking about, we'll finish it up, folks, with the 10-year at 4.61%. 4.61%, the yield on that 10-year. Market's in positive territory. And how about the VIX? As expected, pairing some of the gains of yesterday back under 17. Folks, thanks so much for kicking off your Friday right here with the Morning Market Kickoff with me. Stay tuned. We got our man Basil Chapman coming up next with the Tiger Technicians Hour. Have a great weekend. Have a safe weekend, folks. No drunk driving out there. Be careful. We'll see you back here Monday morning at 9 o'clock. Stay tuned for Basil.